Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today for our first Demo December demonstration. Be sure to chat with me here in the chat box. Let me know where you are watching from. And if you have any questions throughout today, please feel free to drop it in the chat and we will get to your question. We are just so excited to have everyone here today. Yes. All right, give a couple more moments. a drink of water here before I start chatting and we're gonna get started so I thought I would take a moment and just go over how this is gonna work because this is our first official year of doing it virtually well not official we've done it before but I actually kind of know what I'm doing <laughs> in terms of working virtually Hello, Miss Joyce, Miss Tina, Miss Rochelle. Very welcome. Very happy to have you here. So, we are going to have three presentations. Okay, I'm going to do them in person, which takes place on Saturdays here in the store. And then we're going to do them also virtually, which take place here on Tuesdays at lunchtime at noon. So, we will have two more after today that you will collect the secret word from and then on the final event you will be able to uh, purchase for free uh, but through our online store you'll be able to get your design downloaded um, emailed to you for download for free and we'll do all of that and we'll talk about it more during the last presentation and all of that as a reminder as to how all that's gonna happen. So we are gonna talk about three different topics and any questions that you guys have um, for me over the next three weeks in reference to um, Kimberbell and embroidery, Kimberbell tools, things along that lines. Today we're gonna talk about giving your embroidery designs new life. Next week we will talk about clear blue tiles and how to use them, what they are, and other ways to use them besides just for quilting your quilt. And in the final one, we're gonna kind of talk about what's gonna happen in 2023 with Kimberbell and Material Girls. Plus, we're gonna chat about um, how the project is assembled and put together, and any sort of tips and suggestions that I have for you in that particular project. Okay. Now, if you watched my Live at Fives here, last week I talked about, uh, last Friday I had mentioned that they wouldn't be available to order until the end. Well, I changed my mind. We're going to open pre-ordering up for the kits for the project. Um, they won't ship until after the last presentation, which would take place, the last first presentation would take place on the 10th of December. So after the 10th of December, they will ship out if you ordered it. The kit contains everything you need to make the front and the backing of the pillow. Um, it includes a, a roll of velveteen, the new blush velveteen. So the uh, border of this pillow and the back of the pillow is done out of the blush velveteen. has all the embellishments, so the glitter and everything needed to make the pillow. What is not included in the kit is going to be the stabilizer, the thread, and the pillow form. Okay, so everything is there for you, at least to complete the start of the kit. And I'll talk about my thread colors and the stabilizer that I would use and all that good stuff on the 13th here virtually so that everybody can make note as to what thread colors we used and things along that lines. So yes, I decided that we needed to pre-order just in case you guys blew me out of the water and I didn't have enough or wasn't prepared for enough. So that's how Demo December is going to work. Okay, We are going to get started here on our topic. It's an 8 by 8 pillow form. I had Miss Joyce, it, Miss Joyce asked the question, what size pillow? It's the eight by eight Kimberbell pillow. 
One second. Okay, let's get started. So our topic for today is going to be giving new life to the embroidery designs. So looking at your embroidery designs and thinking outside of the box, how can I use it other than the original intent for that Camberbell planned for it to use? Just because that um, design was created for a quilt or a bench pillow doesn't mean it has to stay in that aspect. So we're going to look at three ways to do some alterations to designs. One, we're going to look at the machine and editing designs on your embroidery machine screen. So right on the machine. Nothing extra needed. We're then going to talk about the toolbox embroidery software. And then we're going to finally talk about Bernina embroidery software and what those can do to open up your box of things that you can do with all these embroidery designs that you have been purchasing and collecting over your years as an embroiderer. So first up, we're going to talk about on-screen editing. I am specifically today going to be talking about features from the Bernina Embroidery Plus machines. Okay, so those are machines that um, today are machines that have the plus after their number, or they could also be upgraded machines. Um, we had a 790 upgrade, there was an, a 770 upgrade that could be used. <clears throat> the easiest way to understand is if your machine has pinpoint placement in the Bernina world, then you probably have these particular editing features that I'm going to talk about today. And the three that are showing here in the pink circles are going to be the three that are specific um, to what we do. Everything else shown in the without pink circles is pretty standard on every Bernina embroidery machine in terms of editing features. But we're going to talk about mostly these three in the circles. <clears throat> and as a reminder, um, to access all of those particular machine uh, features, when you open an embroidery design, you would touch the letter I, and then that would open up this large window here with all of your editing tools. Okay? All right. So, what would I want to do here on the machine? So, the big thing is lettering. People always want to put and customize and personalize everything. So, first we're going to look at your built-in lettering features that come on any embroidery machine. So, that's taking a standard design that has nothing related to it, like Santa Claus there, and we're going to add some wording. And we're going to look at some of the things that we can do with those words. Okay, so I'm going to open up my machine here. <clears throat> and we're going to open a design. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. We're excited to have everybody here. So I'm just working on a simulator. So this gives you the appearance of what you would see on your machine. Okay. So I opened up my Santa Claus. He fits in the medium hoop at the moment. So we're going to, um, I'm going to change it over to a larger hoop so that I have more space to be able to add some lettering that's in there. So once you have a design, you can move it, make it bigger, make it smaller. But if I want to add another design or lettering to it, on the machine, we would use this plus sign, okay, that you see right here above these particular layers, okay. So I'm going to hit the plus sign, 
and that's going to bring me out to the screen where I just found the actual design at. And if I want to add lettering to that design, we're going to choose the sewing machine. I don't want to be looking at the USB stick. I want to be looking at the sewing machine. And then once I'm pulling uh, functions and features from my sewing machine, I'm going to choose the ABC. Okay. Now, you have a variety of fonts that come installed on your machine. Okay. Depending on the model, depends upon how many and which ones you do have to use. Um, some of you will also see that they both exist, both horizontal and vertical options. Okay. So you can choose which one you like. And you probably have a few pages depending upon which machine um, you have. So make sure that if you have the icons down here that would allow you to flip pages that you choose to use them. Pick your font. Once you pick your font, it's going to open up a keyboard. That keyboard is going to come in. It is not a standard keyboard layout. It is not a query keyboard layout. It is an alphabetical keyboard which you don't realize how difficult it is to actually um, type on an alphabetical keyboard <laughs> for all the years we've been trained with a standard keyboard. But this keyboard is showing to you in uppercase letters. You have uppercase, lowercase, numbers, punctuation, okay? As well as on the alphabet keyboards, you have a second keyboard that would give you all the special characters that you would need for umlauts and tildes and all those special characters needed for uh, other languages, okay? So you could type whatever you want. So I'm gonna type the word Mary with a capital M. So I'm gonna start with my uppercase keyboard. I'm gonna switch to my lowercase keyboard and then I'm gonna type in the rest of my word, okay? If I make a mistake, I can backspace here with the delete, make my correction. I can hit the space bar if I wanted to type a second word. You do not have the ability on the machine to create a second line in the same screen. So if you wanted the word Merry or the phrase Merry Christmas, you would have to create the word Merry and then go out and add another design and make that other design the word Christmas, okay? So there is no enter key on the machine. It's one line at a time is what we can create. And I'll hit the green check mark when everything is good. It's gonna come in, it's gonna gray out my Santa and my letters are what's showing in color. That's telling me that I can, um, any editing I do gets done to what is showing up in color. So if I were to change anything or edit, it's only gonna happen to the word Mary, okay? So if I move this design, it's only moving my Mary. If I clicked on my Santa Claus, he comes back in color, and anything I do would only be happening to Santa, okay? And then if I wanted a second word, or or phrase in here, I would hit my plus sign again, pick my alphabet, which can be anything you want. Okay, and it's going to bring it in. Now, we all know the red ring, right? The red ring means the design is too big for the hoop. Not a problem, we can fix that. Okay, which we'll do in a minute. But the first thing I want to look at is the word Mary because we have some features in here that we can do with lettering. We have some word art functions. So if I open up the I to open up my edit, my scroll down here, we'll find the ABC icon that is an arced letter. Okay. If I open that up, it's going to designate that my stitch width knob will do one function and my stitch length knob will do another. So your stitch width knob 
actually will adjust the spacing between the letters. Okay, so this comes in handy for words that have words and fonts that have like double L's, double N's, N's and M's that all kind of run together sometimes because of spacing, especially with some of the um, cursive fonts and things like that. So you do have the ability to come in and make adjustments to the spacing between the letters. Now your stitch length font, uh, your stitch length knob, uh, if we turn the knob clockwise, okay, it is going to start arcing my letters clockwise, okay? So my letters are gonna arc basically if I was doing this on the face of a clock, so starting at noon, working my way around, okay? If you turn that knob counterclockwise, your lettering is going to arc the opposite direction. So I could very well get the word Mary going one way and we could get the word Christmas going another, okay? And then you could fiddle with everything. Alignment's a little more challenging on screen in terms of making sure that all three sections are aligned. The best thing that you can do with figuring out alignment would be to select each item, come in to your move icon under the edit, and I would make sure that everything would start with everything being at a zero X, okay? And that's gonna put everything technically centered along the X axis, dead center, okay? If we did Y, it's gonna line everything up uh, on the y-axis, but obviously that doesn't work real well with the way Santa is, so you have to do some maneuvering. We could probably even come in and we could pull him. We could maybe even rotate that a little more fun um, and that type of thing. So you can play. Miss Pam, I am getting to your question. We are getting there, okay? So you can play with your lettering. Um, everything is on its own layer, okay? If you wanted to move this whole design, so like as you see now, I've kind of got it down in the bottom of my hoop and maybe I want to raise it up. In your layers function, if you grab the very bottom layer, that's the layer that doesn't have any sort of number in it, that selects everything. Now, if you were to move anything, you would be moving all of the designs, okay? So everything can come back up into your hoop or moved together. You do not need to move all these things individually, okay? Does that make sense in that world? Okay, so with that being said, if I look at this middle Santa with the, fir the words, my first Christmas, this was done, I opened the Santa, I opened up and I added the line, my first, and then I added another design that says Christmas, okay? And then I lined them all up. And then the same thing I did with using the Santa that I just showed you with adding art lettering for it, okay? Just a little bit of something different, especially there's lots of us that want to just put names on things or customize things, and you can use that from what's built into your machine. But let's look at a little bit deeper editing that you can actually do on your machine. It's actually extremely powerful. Now, I have here a Kimberbell mug rug. Um, I believe this was from Mug Rugs 5. It's the wreath with the words, in all things give thanks. Maybe I want to get rid of just this wording, and you would say, oh, not a problem. I'll just skip it. I won't stitch it. 
Maybe you want to replace those words with something different or you want to remove them completely. Okay. And then you can also do some of that. So it would require a little bit of um, skipping and fast forwarding and, and it takes a little bit to get, get there, but we have some features now in our machine that doesn't, we don't have to do it that way anymore. Okay, so let me show you here. Okay, so if I open up, oops, one second, let's get the If I open up that mug rug there, and I'm actually going to come in and we're going to rotate this so that I can read it and I don't have to turn my neck sideways. I'm just going to get a big, bigger hoop. Okay. So <clears throat> I want to get rid of in all things give thanks. Now I could come in and just skip that when I was embroidering, that type of thing, but let's delete it from the screen and just get rid of it completely from the embroidery. So on your machines, if you open up the edit function, you have this icon right here, okay? Kind of looks like two boxes and a plus sign on one end. This is ungroup. So when we click on this and we tell it to ungroup, you will see that now every single color stop of this design is separated out for you. So I could actually work my way through this design and find the option I want to get rid of. Okay. So I can select my words, I can come over to my edit, and I can choose the trash can. And it's gone, okay? So I just got rid of that. I don't need it there, right? I can, oops, wrong thing. Let me zoom in here. So I now have my design ready for me to either embroider it or maybe we want to add a monogram here okay so just like we did before we would hit the plus sign go out i'm gonna find a letter okay i could put that letter there I could make that letter bigger, I could make it smaller, I could do anything I wanted with it, but I'm going to put it, you know, visually I'm going to get it centered on that particular design. Okay? But let's look at how this is going to stitch out. Okay? And for the most part, it stitches everything up to color stop 14 is the last color of our wreath. Color stop 15 is the stop that would sew our backing on. And then it goes to our letter. Well, that's not really going to work, right? We need the letter to stitch before it stitches the backing. Now, many of you that have been embroidering for a while, you're like, not a problem. I'll just skip ahead and then I'll come back. Well, that's fine, except the letter H here is my last step. So therefore the design is going to think it's finished. You're going to have to reopen it and you're going to have to fast forward 15 color stops. We're going to grab the letter H here. In your edit function, you have this icon here that says one, two, three, right? This is rearrange the order in which the design stitches. So I'm going to select the design or the layer that I want to move and I'm going to arrow it down one. So now when I look, stitching my wreath, then it's going to stitch my letter, and then it's going to stitch the last of my, um, my backing piece. Okay. 
So that's going to kind of put everything in order. So when you do start to do some deleting and adding things in, you may need to just take a moment and work your way through the layers to make sure the design is going to embroider in the order that you plan it. And if not, you can rearrange it. Okay? So that very easily you could come back, you could completely delete all of that wreath if you wanted and put Santa Claus in there. Okay? One thing that many people didn't realize the other day when I did this is normally you would come in, you would select what you wanted to throw away. So let's say I wanted to delete everything except for the quilting and the actual mug rug assembly. Okay, so we could, you would open and hit the trash can. Were you aware that you could touch the layer with your finger and swipe right and that will prompt the delete function? Okay, so I'm just putting my finger on the color, the layer that I want and press and swipe right. And I can just work my way through quickly deleting everything. So now what I have left is a blank template for me to be able to create my own custom mug rug. Okay? You could put anything you wanted in, in here. Okay? You could easily save this. So I could come out and I could save this to my machine. And then I've always got that blank template there for me. Now this function doesn't work real well with mug rugs volume one and two. Those were early Kimberbell mug rugs and the quilting does not go underneath of the embroidery design. So for example, the pineapple mug rug, if you removed all of the pineapple, there would be no quilting underneath of it. But in mug rugs four and five, the quilt designs go all the way underneath of the actual embroidery. Okay? So they're going to work the best for you. And then you can use that as a basis for adding other things. So let me see. So here, this is a custom mug rug. The base of it being used with the Kimberbell mug rug. Okay? But she deleted everything and then replaced it with um, her own designs. Okay. It should work for the OESD mug rug as well. As long as the quilting goes underneath of all of the embroidery. Sometimes, depending on how and when it was created, sometimes the they have removed the overlap, so there's no embroidery under embroidery, but it can't hurt to experiment, and you'll know right away when you start deleting things if there is embroidery missing. Now, if I, for example, removed all of this Santa and there was no quilting underneath of this, and I was going to put something else on top of it, nobody would know the difference. But if you weren't going to put Santa back there or a design back there, um, it would be obvious if the quilting didn't run all the way to the edge. Okay. All right. Let's look at software. So this is standalone software that works on a computer or a tablet. The toolbox software will actually work on a tablet. Um, computer is not required. Um, it is cloud-based. Why would I want Toolbox if I could do all of this on my computer? Well, Toolbox 1 is going to give you more fonts. So maybe you don't like those 8, 7, or even 6 fonts that are built into your machine, and you want more. This, this font, this, ooh, let me see. Words are very hard today. <laughs> Uh, toolbox gives you, it's modular, so you can buy bits and pieces of Toolbox if you only want a monogram. There's just a monogramming portion. If you want to do just lettering, there's a lettering portion. There's editing. So there's lots of different, 
excuse me, lots of different modules of toolbox that you can add to things if you don't want all of it, okay? It is compatible to open or import all of the design files that you see there, as well as being able to export all the design files you see there. I have put a link in the comments. There is a 30-day free trial up for Toolbox if you wanted to take a look at it. So let me get Toolbox in here, okay? So I can show you a couple of things. So Toolbox, like I said, works on a PC, a Mac, or a tablet. This, what you're looking at here is full version toolbox. Okay. Uh, Ms. Pam, yes, you could move the letter H down to the um, fourth layer. You could move the letter H to embroider anywhere you would like mm -hmm. in that last design. So toolbox is going to give me one, if you get the editing portion of toolbox, you will have the ability to um, make changes and edit. So this here is the is a free design from Kimberbell. It was um, part of Love Notes, uh, the Love Notes collection. It's up on their website for download. And he's a cute little bird, but I don't really want this heart in here, okay? So with toolbox, I can do the same thing that you would have done for the most part that you could have done and I can come in and I can work my way through deleting all the things related to that design. Okay? So it's a few less steps, a little quicker, a little faster. I can also come in and add lettering with toolbox, depending upon the lettering or the level that you get, will depend upon how many fonts you get. <coughs> Excuse me. You also get a variety of baselines or lettering shapes. So you could lay out your lettering in any of these formats. Let me, I'm gonna type in my word here at the top. I'm going to come down and we're going to click on choose an alphabet <coughs> and you will see all of these alphabet options that we have and we can click on any of them and preview what it looks like okay and you can play and have fun and all that you can also make it smaller so I can make it fit where I wanted, I could add a paragraph, I could add another layer, I could change the colors, um, I could spell right too. <laughs> if I needed, we could come in and edit, we could print templates. When I was done, I could come down and hit the um, export to machine and it would create my design and send it to my USB stick for me to bring over to the embroidery machine, okay? So the biggest difference is yes, I could have done all of that first editing of getting rid of that middle heart on my machine, okay? I could have added lettering on my machine. However, I don't have 100 fonts on my machine, okay? I have a harder time on my machine getting everything centered or lined up to where I want it to be that type of thing. I can print a template from inside toolbox so that I can test the size of the design. I can also do this at night when I'm not in my embroidery in my sewing room, when I am on the couch, when I'm traveling, I can spend some time on the airplanes, in the car, um, creating the design so that when I get ready, get back, I am ready to start stitching. Okay and I'm not spending all that time looking at my machine. Plus, you're also looking at a monitor the size of your computer versus the seven or eight inch little screen that you have built into your sewing machine, okay? So that's one of the major differences between those two particular um, functions between doing it on the machine 
and doing it in toolbox. Okay, software will make your life easier. So like I said, there are four layers to, um, for modules to toolbox, depending upon which module you get, or you can get all the modules will depend upon what features that you get for it. So if you just want more lettering, you can just get the lettering function of Toolbox, which gives you a hundred alphabets. <coughs> now, a note. There are places and things that you can buy fonts, okay? Uh, embroidery fonts, let's put it that way. <coughs> they're not actually fonts that work like typing on a keyboard okay so if you buy an embroidery font then you're going to be bringing one letter in at a time okay so it makes it a little more challenging to be able to uh, string them all together on the machine and make sure they're all lined up if you were going to purchase that embroidery font It'd be much easier to bring it into a software program, add all the designs, use your alignment tools to be able to get things lined up. So don't be um, thrown off by that. They are, those embroidery fonts are one letter for every design, or every design is a letter, okay? It is not a typable keyboard uh, font that's out there. So just a note. Okay. All right. The last thing that we're going to look at is embroidery software, Bernina embroidery software. It is a different level. It is a higher level of software, extremely powerful. Okay. In <coughs> this world, we all have, we're on version nine embroidery software. If you don't, if you own embroidery software from Bernina already and you're on version eight, <coughs> or even version 7. It works the same for the most part as Embroidery 9, but we do have a lot of really new features and cool features now. And also, if you are on Bernina Embroidery 7 and you have to get a new computer, you're going to have to upgrade your software. Um, version 7 Bernina Embroidery software is not going to work on newer versions of Windows. Okay? Just a mental note about that. So, Bernina Embroidery Software, I'm going to specifically talk about the Creator Edition. It is the entry level, the newbie level of embroidery software. Going to give you the capabilities of what we've talked about plus more, okay, um, than what just Toolbox has. So, yes, lettering, you have 60 fonts that come built into the Bernina Embroidery Software. You also have monogramming fonts. You have the ability to do some digitizing, which means drawing shapes and turning them into embroidery, okay? <clears throat> you have all sorts of editing capabilities um, with this as well, being able to change the type of fill stitch, the decorative stitch, um, and some other fun tools that you can do inside of the embroidery software, okay? So, <clears throat> Let's look at what we can do from inside of here. First of all, how many of you own, may own this collection? This is the Heartfelt Gift Pockets, okay? There are 12 designs on this collection, but inevitably you've looked at it and was like, there's just not one for the project that I need, okay? I want something, you know, for a neighbor gift, or I want something, maybe I don't want this cupcake to say happy Galentine's Day. Maybe I want it to say happy birthday, or something along that lines. Or I want to create my own design for this. Bernina Creator Software allows you to do that. So I can take that design that says just popping by to say no one's better than you and we can replace wording we can look at colors we can do all sorts of things and replace words with new words okay or replace designs with that okay so let's take a look at create uh, creator software 
So I'm going to go and I'm going to open a design and let's open up this one. We could do, let's do this. Let's say you want to do something for your sewing friends. Okay. So inside of here, I've got this design. When I open my design, everything here is glued together, meaning that it's grouped. So I can't make any changes without being able to accidentally delete everything. So we have the ability to ungroup. And then I have the ability to grab individual bits and pieces. But I'm going to open up my color film over here on the side. And I'm going to get rid of all of those words. Okay. And I can easily then replace this with something else. Okay. With the software as well, you have some uh, really fine text that is meant to be small. Okay. So these fonts give you, in this software, gives you a range of size. And that range of size would be for um, giving you the best possible stitch out. So you don't want to use this, for example, this Run Liberty font is really meant to be stitched anywhere from a quarter of an inch to under a half inch. When you start getting larger than that, you need to make some adjustments, okay? You may want to look at a different font. Miss Debbie, I will answer your question in one moment. So I can go through and pull up, you know, a couple of different things. You can also in here type paragraphs. Okay. So we have the option of paragraph formatting. You have all sorts of justifications that can be done and everything would be in there for me. Okay, I'm actually going to put that Quiltmas as its own line. And we can go. So Debbie asked what format, about formats. Okay, so for me, if I was going to use, I don't like that font. <laughs> um, we can rotate in here. If I was going to do editing in my embroidery software, I'm going to work with the art format. Okay, dot ART. You also have undo in here as well. <laughs> um, I would work with art dot ART. The EXP format is a format meant to be read by machines. It's not really a format that you want to do editing to. You can do editing to it on your machine, but you need to be, when it comes to making a design bigger or smaller or anything along that lines, you're going to want to um, use art. Okay, when you start going they tell you plus or minus 20%. When you work with EXP and you start getting outside of that plus or minus 20, things can get a little iffy. Okay. And now we can, um, if you work in art, you have a little bit easier time. Art's the original artwork format. Okay. And then EXP is that art format broken out into the three files that you may be familiar with in if you, with Ben with Bernina, EXP usually has the EXP.BMP and the INF file with it. Typically, you get all three formats. If you export from Inside Software or OESD, um, would give you all three formats or all three files needed for EXP format um, for true reading on your machine. So we always like to work with art. So if I'm working in my software, I'm working with art. Okay. Okay, and then you have the ability to take that stitch felt pocket 
that heartfelt pocket and modifying it to the holiday of your choice, okay? And you don't have to um, be restricted to the fact that you can't use that collection because there aren't any um, options for you on the design collection. So we're almost done, but here's your code word, okay? So write that word down and hold on to it because that's code word number one. And as well, for my gals that are local, and if you decide, you don't have to do them all virtually. So if you needed to come to an in-person class, you can come in person and do some virtually. They don't all have to be done the same way um, once you start one way, okay? All right, now let's look at a couple more things. So thinking outside the box is really what we want to do. We want to give new life to those designs, not just by being able to edit it, but also by being able to use the designs in other ways. So all the images that you see here com have come from inside the Kimberbellas and Fellas Facebook group. Um, if you're on Facebook, you may want to take a look at that group if you don't already belong there. Um, I don't follow it in my feed because it is a very busy group and my news feed would be nothing but this. Um, but every once in a while I go in and look around. So these are all things all designs from Kimberbell that have been used in other ways, okay? So I'm going to start here at the top. This was this month's mug rug or this month's design dealer design exclusive that was designed to be a mug rug. We've taken the design from the mug rug, deleted everything but the design, and we've replaced it onto a um, Kimberbell velvet bag. Okay, perfect little uh, thing that you could throw your dice in, your Yahtzee, your Farkle, all that kind of thing in that bag and, you know, throw it in a suitcase or a travel bag. This stocking here, this little nutcracker comes from the Sugar Plum Jubilee uh, event. Okay, so that little nutcracker, he could be an ornament, he could go on a garland, but this one was embroidered on a stocking. Okay, and I believe that stocking was the same stocking from the uh, Kimberbell um, Noel stocking collection. This pillow and the, um, let's see, the pumpkin, the sweetest pie pillow here and the snow pillow. Um, same concept, the sweetest pie, this was normally a bench pillow. They picked and choose a few different designs and then turned it into that same format of the no place like home pillow or the sweet as liberty pillow um, and just replaced things with other things, okay? This pillow here, the winter pillow, these are designs from all sorts of Kimberbell collections. This mug is from Cup of Cheer. You've got this little snowman. I think he was from a uh, fill in the blank or design exclusive uh, from a few years ago. It could even be from her winter applique volumes that are there, quilted in clear blue tiles. These books were from a collection, a design, not a collection, a fill-in-the-blank design from last year, I believe, that made a, was done as a storybook pillow, so it was a pocket on a book pillow. Um, she took it, rem didn't embroider it on the pocket of a pillow, instead added it to a canvas tote bag for a book club. These are the pies from Sweetest Pie. So just the pie tops were stitched and then glued to the top of um, aluminum pans to give the appearance of a dimensional pie. Perfect for like a display or a tiered tray um, for your um, holiday display. And then this last one here, this is the Kimberbell Cuties Volume 1 design 
that they replaced the corners with a design that was originally on a mug rug. Okay, and so coming in and pulling some of that stuff out, I mean, it gives you the ability to continue to use those designs way beyond the original format in what it is. So, like I said, it is more along the lines of just one. We all have a lot of designs. I have more designs than I know what I ever know what I'll do with. Yes. But this does give you the option of looking outside of the colors that it may be stitched in, okay, on the machine, as well as the colors that are on the front photo, um, all that stuff. It's completely different. Now, it's harder to do color changing with Kimberbell because they don't, she doesn't give you uh, colors because you could be using any color, which is why she doesn't tell you, oh, we did this or we did this, um, because you could be using a different color fabric. But let me show you one more thing here. So in Embroidery Software Creator, as well as in some of the machines, we have what we call um, color wheel okay so we have the ability to open a design and very quickly change its colors okay and so maybe you don't want pink and blue balloons or you know pink and red balloons you want something else you want them to be a different shade you can move things around you can also play with your different, you want them to be monochromatic. You can come pick your shade of monochromatic and you can adjust the brightness and the darkness. And the software is going to do your thread color substitutions for you. Okay. The same thing on the simulator or not on the sim, the same thing on your machine. Let me see, where is it at here? We all have, um, on our machine, we all have the, oops, I got one too many on there, the palette. So up here in the paint palette on the right-hand side, this little guy at the top is going to open up color wheel. And you can just spin your color wheel. He'll make your substitutions. You can work with brightness and darkness. Okay. And then if you completely change it, and then come back. The machine will insert the substitutions of the thread colors that match the color change that you made. Okay. So you can see that my isochords have now been changed over to match what is there in my new colorations. Okay. All right, everybody, that is what I have for you today. I hope you found it informational, informative. Um, remember, we do have two 30-day free trials of the two software programs that I talked about. Um, you can find them from the links below. You can also find them on Bernina.com and click there. They're free. When you're done, you can delete them if you don't want, but it's a good time to explore. Uh, you have pretty much full access in that 30 days to work with the embroidery softwares and give them a try. I also have up on here on YouTube under the Bernina Mastery, I believe I have one or two um, software mastery lessons. If you're curious, you can kind of see what those softwares are also capable, the Bernina embroidery software is capable of doing. And Bernina has a variety of uh, mastery lessons or toolbox lessons as well, um, if you're curious. Well, I hope everyone has a great rest of your day and I will see everybody back here next Tuesday and we're going to talk about clear blue tiles. So if you've not yet used them, you have them, haven't opened them, are afraid of them, we're going to look at trying them on something besides a quilt. So maybe you can get be a little more comfortable using them and then you will be ready to tackle a quilt. 
Well, I hope everybody has a great rest of their day, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye, everybody.